Hello. Hi. Welcome back to episode 15. Um, and um, Jamie's got a migraine. Well, I don't know if it's still migraine, but it's bad headache. It's like yeah. The migraine hangover, I call it. So just lingering, but it feels like it's going to be triggered again. So kind of bummed. I had big plans for my fitness and health this week and spent my first workout of the week on the bike. You can still do good with your food. I know. <laughs> so. Cheers, Chai. <laughs> anyway, so we'll try and push through today and get through today's episode. Um, uh, something's different about you. Oh, my gosh. I know. Did you trim your beard? Mm-hmm. Did you trim, trim your nose hairs? Out. I trim my nuts. Um, trim my nose hairs. You didn't trim your eyebrows. No, I don't do that. No, but I did, uh, <laughs> I was tired of working at the chocolate factory, so. Like the Gene Wilder days. Yeah, so I finally cut it. Um, my hair has been growing for over a year, um, a year and a few months, I should say, a year and four or five months, and I was trying to go for a look that I just don't think was attainable, and I think, you know, Jamie would always tell me, like, how expensive shit was like trying to take care of your hair like professionally and all that and i was trying to see if i could do the length and the jason momoa type length of hair and i just think that what <laughs> he did up too hot oh wow. so you burned yourself almost well, that'll help too. <laughs> um jason momoa is not a ginger <laughs> Um, anyways, um, you know what I'm talking about. I know. He learned that his hair doesn't grow down. It grows out. But <laughs> it gets bigger. Also, Jamie would always tell me, like, first of all, the money that he probably spends and has, you know, he has style all the time. professionals do his hair probably daily. Products, like, it's probably always, always done. And the maintenance alone, especially on mine, just wasn't happening. So, um, I've always kind of wanted to try this look anyways, but I just, my hair was never long enough to do it. So I did have, actually before this, when I did used to shave my head for a while there, I was doing just the shave sides and a little bit on top. So it was kind of the style, but just not as long as tops. But I'm excited to have short hair on the sides again and not these fucking curls all over. So Show them. Look. Whoa. Whoa. And look this. Little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest. <laughs> Peter Cottontail. <laughs> so, yes, that was done yesterday. Um, you go, boy. Jamie not only um, gained confidence in taking care of some uh, uh, makeup, but also did uh, my back of my head. So, I kudos did. to you for oh, uh, wow. growing a pair of nuts and uh, <laughs> yeah. doing it. So, you did a good job on both. So I know I did my friend Megan's makeup yesterday. I'm actually was working on my Instagram before and after post on that. Have which is not something I love makeup. Everybody follows me knows I'm all about makeup, but I always get asked to do other people's makeup and I'm not confident in that whatsoever. Like my hands are shaky and I'm just not makes me nervous. But she had asked me like a couple weeks ago if I would do her, not only her tan, but her makeup for a really special photo shoot she was doing. And, um, I just love her. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go for it. I feel more confident in my skill level and the products I use. So we're just going to do it. And I knew she didn't want like crazy glam makeup, you know, like she wanted more natural, um, nothing too intense, which she didn't want to look like a hooker. Well, no, I mean like glam makeup, like bridal makeup, or, oh, oh, you oh, know, oh, like I see. the stuff you see on, you know, social media, the stuff we watch where they transform it just, intense. Oh yeah. I can't, I'm not quite there and I don't think I'll ever be there. But anyway, so I went over yesterday morning, Sunday morning, and we had some good couple hour girl time and did her makeup and yeah, it's pretty awesome. Came out good. Then I got to come home and work on shaving this dude's head. Mm -hmm. So, just the back of it. Double whammy day. Um, I'll post a picture of that once you post the Megan post up. I'll put it in the edit. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we have uh, had going on. Um, yeah, nothing too exciting. <laughs> Not really. So um, uh, this episode I wanted to get into. Um, for some reason, the other day, I knew I was going to pass out taking a nap, and so I put on Dexter. And this is one of those you can have on any episode, and 
just let it play and it's always going to be good but now i've fallen in the trap of i didn't take a nap and now jamie and i are watching we're sucked into it we're again. sucked into it again watch and you know this is probably the third or fourth time that's happened you know watching the episodes again and, and we're just f- falling in love with it all over again the writing is so good and it's so intense and so i want to talk about and there's probably going to be some obvious ones um tv shows that have that type of watchability that might be her favorite Dexter for me because I mean Dexter was never a favorite of mine I'd never even heard of it until he and I started dating and then he started you know playing them and I got kind of caught up in some of them and now we've watched it enough where I can actually remember things I'm like no I think this would happen um but it's the his dry humor like his <laughs> yeah. one-liners and even just some really good quotes that you know Scott's even posted from it is because I love quotes I love words that have meaning and um there's just something about it, like I'll catch like just his sarcasm, you know, his face expression and the voices in his head, the stuff he's <laughs> thinking. It's like it just there's just something about it, you know, and um, and that's why I know a lot of people compared you to Dexter, the show you. And it's just yeah. not when I'm watching Dexter now, I'm like, oh, you is not even close to this. Um, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But I couldn't watch you over and over again. Like I can sit and watch Dexter with him and even I get distracted because usually he puts on his stuff and I'll keep doing my own work on my phone or my planner or whatever. And I find myself putting my stuff down and getting into the whole Dexter story. So, so. so therefore, the watchability on you wouldn't rank that high because it's one of those kind of one and done shows, you think? For me, but I I know other people probably have already watched it a second time. Yeah, like I, yeah. I definitely feel like it's – um, and I'm looking forward to the next season for sure, but I just feel like – I don't know. There's something with Dexter, and I feel like Dexter – We and I'm sure it would happen with you too and other shows, but I feel like every time I watch Dexter with you, I catch something new, you know, yeah, like something yeah. I didn't catch before. That happened you know, with you or, if you rewatch you too. There'd yeah, be stuff probably with caught. any show, but but for me the and I watched the first season of you with Jamie. I kind of she zipped through. She, I think she stayed up late one night and finished the second half of you. So I didn't really uh, catch the and, and to me it was it was fine. I didn't hate it, but I th- I think the level of writing is just like Jamie said, the quotes that Dexter is able to narrate through the show and put out. It's just another level. I actually forgot of that deep- um, until you mentioned it yesterday that Dexter actually is a book. And so I love to read, even yeah. though I can't, you know, these days I can't read a book like in two days like I used to, except to the Twilight series. That's the last series that I ever read like within a weekend. You got through those quick? Fast, because I was so hooked on them. And um, Shopaholic Books. Um the Sophie Kinsella series, those ones I can read them within a couple days. But otherwise, I don't find myself reading books as quickly as I used to. But I do want to – I was going to actually hop on Amazon Prime and stuff and see um, how much, like, the set is or whatever. I like to check those out too because I've never tried those type of books. I've always been more of, like, the – whether it's a science or a motivation, those type of books. I've never actually sat down and read, like, a nonfiction or a fiction type book. Um, So that would be cool. But anyways – Shows that um, withstand or have high-ranking watchability, not just what we think the general public would think, but just ourselves. Now, for you, I know that you could put on – I'm not even going to put Friends in there because I know that you – the watchability <laughs> – Damn it. That's what I was well, thinking. I was like, I watch Friends all day long. <laughs> because I know that that's just a given. Yeah. Um, but, like, maybe it was shows growing up or, or any of the shows that you've watched recently that you think um, – or do any come to mind that have – I think Shameless we've put on. I think we've gone through it twice. Yeah, I could start on that again. I could start over that. Um, Shameless we've gone um, through twice. I could do uh, oh, Wentworth. I could watch some of those early days ones. I like Ma- those ones with, with Frankie. Oh, 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 oh yes. I, I don't know why I was thinking of... Um, fucking prison break <laughs> no no oh, like, because the uh, main Wentworth character Miller. is Wentworth yeah yeah <laughs> um but no uh yes I could do yeah. Wentworth the women's prison movie that's based out of where Australia Australia and be- because it's... but the early season with Frankie those were my favorite I, I I we enjoyed them all the way up until the latest season but I and with what's her face it was scary the governor yes I can't intense. believe I can't believe how good the last season was I, I yes mean, it did with Frankie you know. kind of fallen not fallen but kind of getting away from the show and coming back like i was like how are they going to keep the storyline going and they fucking did yeah they they and it, it, because it's not an american show like orange is the new black it doesn't feel i mean yeah there are some parts in there like oh geez that would never fucking happen but not as much as like um orange is the new black so this one is the, the intensity um everything is yeah, yeah good call on wentworth 
that'd be a good one. I'm trying to think of um, any other box sets that that we have that we have that we so uh, one that i can't get into oh no we're talking about tv shows not so much movies though huh yeah because i was gonna say like repeating things watching wise but i was thinking box i was thinking books but uh is um harry potter he can oh uh, <laughs> i just can't get into that but we were talking about mov- shows not movies yeah i can rewatch those anytime oh pull my hair out oh god just a little bit it went right back where it was did it <laughs> yeah. um i know see uh, psh, 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 psh. but um yeah i think god damn is that all i can't think of you think any kind of show like i yeah. mean i have reality shows like well, i could watch shows over are- and over again like i love watching old seasons of like real world and the bachelor things like that i could definitely go back and watch those but that would be by myself because you're not going to watch that stuff no um, um, like rerun type of things. I, I mean, guess. I liked all the shows like growing up, like Full House and stuff. Like that ca- when those all came back on. Yeah, I could I because could watch that stuff. Though I think those were part of their time. I Wonder put Years. Those I used in. to watch over and over and over again. No. It used to come on late on regular cable, I like at that. eleven, and I would just put it on and fall asleep to it. But I would. I could watch Wonder Years over and over again. Um, Game of Thrones to me has high watchability. Um, I never got into that. I tried numerous times. What's I, that other? You watch that other weird Viking show, the humorous one. Norseman. You put that, that on all the time with that's background ve- noise. That's very. Uh, not a lot of people know about that. It's basically an old Viking show, but they kind of use like modern day humor. Um, that is thrown into the show so yeah but i find you put that on a lot like sometimes just in the background yes it it is it is funny it's very funny but um yeah i just i thought it was random that we you know are sitting here watching dexter again and um wanted to talk about tv shows and not, not as many are coming to um my mind as i thought so you know no because no ow you're right there. Stuck in my throat. No, because <laughs> you tend to put on a lot of podcasts. Like, we don't watch TV shows. I know. <laughs> Our background TV is usually podcasts like Fighter and the Kid or Tiger Belly or Joe Rogan or stand up. You know, we're watching stand up comedy. <laughs> so, if I'm in the kitchen doing cooking or something, or like if I have a computer on in the living room, sometimes a TV show is. You have sometimes to see it, it. it will distract like jamie said sometimes we'll get distracted and like fuck we won't get any work done mm-hmm. so like if it's you know uh brennan and theo or or brian count any of them i can i don't have to look at the tv but i feel like because a lot of those i feel like you've already listened to while you're at work There's, sometimes you like to rewatch. not always because i haven't been listening to the fighter and the kid at work unless no. i really see it but sometimes seeing their reaction sometimes i'll go back and look for that because yeah. it just sounded so fucking funny but um yeah, sometimes I will have a lot of that on at home. But anyways, hmm. yeah, I um just wanted to talk about TV shows. Let us know what you guys think. I'm sure that we're forgetting a ton, of maybe even current shows that are out there. Um, What's that show called? So when my Bachelor ends, so we don't have regular cable. So when I watch Bachelor, I watch it the day after on Hulu, um, after the day after it aired. And so right after Bachelor, it always goes into this next show. And it's a regular, I think, what is that, ABC or whatever? Um, and it's a kid that's like got hired on in a hospital, but he's autistic. And... The very first day, like I, it just the I don't know how to mess with the controllers because we run everything through Xbox. So usually I just watch whatever's coming on, and the show came on and it totally just caught my attention. I mean, he's a young teenage boy, or maybe young, you know, I want to say he's not in his twenties, but anyways, kid was like dying in the middle of you know a mall, and this other kid came and you know just kind of awe, a little different, but he saved this kid's life. And come to find out, he was trying to you know get hired on in this. Um, at a hospital, but I can't remember what it's called. Good. But All those shows are so horrible. I thought it was There's kind so of, many goddamn doctor shows I was like, found myself at the end of this episode just like rooting for this kid. Like, oh, please. You know, he had to go in front of the board and 
you know, try to, you know, explain why, because some people said, yes, they would bring him on to the hospital. Other people are like, no, he's a liability. And I'm like, dude, bring the kid on. You know, I found myself like getting sucked into it. And I turned, I made myself turn it off when that episode ended, I found out what happened. But then I turned it off because I was like, no, I can see where I'm gonna get sucked into this TV show. And sure enough, the next time I watched Bachelor, it started again. And I was like, no, no, I have to go to bed. So that show, it's not something I'm saying I would watch over and over again. But it was just a show that I caught my attention and I was like, go kid, go. Blech. You're so negative. Sorry, I'm negative because I don't like a show that looks horrible. Yes, let me watch podcasts Sorry, I have an opinion. all day long talk about their life like we are. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so on to the next one. Um, uh, Jamie went and did a, um, what's the board, like a vision board? Was that a few weeks ago? Yeah, <laughs> fell off the fridge. Now it's on top of the <laughs> fridge. It's really doing its job collecting dust on top of the fridge. I had a question about like vision boards. So yes, right at the beginning of the year, I went with a group of women and we did our vision boards. It was super fun afternoon. I think I shared it. I think I showed it to you guys. Um, did all my little cutouts and everything. Totally thought it was cute. Hung it on my fridge. I haven't looked at it once since. Like I legit, <laughs> uh, like I said the other day, Cruz was like, "Mommy, your picture fell," and it was laying on the ground, almost under the fridge, and he couldn't get to stay back up on the fridge. The magnet didn't want to hold it anymore, so I stuck it up on top of the fridge, and now there's stuff on top of it. So it's gotta be I'm just place curious to like how it if it really influences people. Like, do you do those things, and do you hang it like on a main wall or in the bathroom on the mirror, you know? And do you really does it help, or is it jumping just fun and then? It collects stuff. I think somewhere around your vanity would be good because you're always doing makeup or something. But I know what's on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you you know what's on it, but you're not visually seeing it every day. I know. (laughs) Just curious if other people like find it beneficial. Call me negative. I don't need visions. (laughs) It's in my brain. (laughs) (laughs) uh, But um, (laughs) it's all in here. Anyways, Jimmy and I do like to dream big, Um, and so uh, I told her to pick if money wasn't an issue. To pick two dream cars uh, that you could get today. And so I'm going to go with hers. And uh, you can tell me, obviously, this first one. Well, let's go. I I know that that one's been your favorite for a while. So let's go with this one first. What do you got? This has been my favorite since I was a kid. Yeah? Yeah, 68 Camaro, all blacked out. That is fucking clean. I like that a lot. I would love, well, I was raised around cars. We did car shows. We had, you know, we're into the muscle cars, low riders, um, all my life, you know, through, you know, grade school growing up. Um, and so I was always around nice vehicles and stuff. And so I miss that. I do miss having a toy, you know, a car that, you know, we just, you know, everybody knew your car in town. Like everybody Mm -hmm. knew, Oh, that's, you know, the Fasano family or whatever. Um, but one thing I always talked about doing, and I had talked with my dad was, was restoring, you know, either a Camaro or a Mustang. Um, and, uh, yeah, and if, so if I could do that today, it would be an all blacked out in that this one particular that you're seeing, probably up behind my head, yeah. or here, yeah. or here, or that, here, is a 68 Camaro, and I always just, everything to me, black, black, that, black on black. That's that's clean. I like that a lot. Mm. And then for your other one, this one is... This could be my everyday mom car <laughs> in automatic. <laughs> and everybody that knows I want a Jeep, all black always, all blacked out. And they're like, you don't drive stick. I'm like, I don't need to drive stick. That's why they made automatic. I don't want to go. I'm not going to take it four wheel driving. I just want it to look pretty. So, but the only thing is I will say is, um, so my family, we had a Jeep and actually that was one of our show cars and it won, you know, tons of shows and stuff, but, um, it was just a two door, but, um, this, my research on Jeeps, you know, for my, you know, not my, what if is my someday, um, is the newer ones break a lot. Like there's a lot of issues with Jeeps um, nowadays. And I don't know, I don't remember that being a thing back in the day. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't want a car that's going to cost us an arm and a leg. I had an Audi that did that to me. <laughs> our, our, I love my Audi, but it was a nightmare. Like it just, um, it was one thing after another. And there wasn't really anyone special in this area that hit the Audis. And so I felt like maybe the people didn't know what they were doing with it when I would bring it in. Um, from, that Audi? Yeah. Oh, sick. All black. It was yeah. all black. <laughs> black rims. Um, so ultimately, I mean, if money wasn't an object, I would be driving either of these vehicles. Yeah. And I would be dumping money into them to customize them and take care of them if they broke. <laughs> our, our family in Colorado, uh, and Dodie and Kip, they have a ton of Jeeps. 
and but they're always taking they do, them like, out rock crawling, so though. they're always doing like maintenance intense. on them because <laughs> they do crazy rock cl- rock crawling so um that'd be sick yeah so those are my two vehicles in my reality world of what i will be getting hopefully someday which is on my vision board that i have in my brain is just a honda <laughs> i would like it to look sick like little you know decked out honda but we want something with good gas mileage for yeah. once in our life <laughs> yes that'd be and so nice i'd be fine with a, my friend ashley she has a sick honda civic you know um hers is a two-door but it was like a limited one and they don't even make it anymore but i love going in her car plus she drives like a badass anyway and i mean she'll be on the phone with me on her bluetooth or whatever is coming through her speakers and all of a sudden she'll be like get out of my way and i hear <laughs> she's just i was like is that you and uh you know, so ultimately in reality of this day and age where we're at now, but retired someday, I would love to have yeah. one of these dream vehicles. For Oh, yeah, for sure. So for me, um, the first one I'm going to go, this car's not out yet. This is the Tesla Roadster. That's pretty. Um, I think it comes out either at the end of this year or 2021. Now, this is their, like, um, exotic car. Um, it's 250000 dollars it goes to goes from zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds and i don't know i meant to check specs on like porsche and some of the other cars but that i believe is one of the fastest cars that's so funny so you literally get on the on-ramp freeway and then you're probably at your in a task area you'd be at your next exit like within like a second you know what i mean like it's so fucking t- crazy pickup is so fast like you would literally if like you were getting on on traffic and getting off on santa oh Sumo, my god you'd be like, it's zzz. <laughs> it's yeah. so quick but to me this is just it is exotic looking for a tesla it doesn't yeah, look because like not all teslas are great looking like they don't no, they look uh-uh. like your basic sedan you know yeah, with yeah. just a, lots of bells and whistles but exactly that one does look cool yeah, the inside of them look more pretty than some of the current ones that have been out but this just looks fucking sharp um and now this is funny because i know i'm gonna look like a total tesla dick rider here <laughs> with my next car and originally it was going to be because when Jamie and I first started dating, I had a, um, a Dodge Ram, um, and I absolutely miss having a truck like that—a big truck. It had a ton of room. It rode awesome. And uh, once our family was about to expand, we sold it <laughs> yeah. to get into something else. And I've always missed having something big like that. I and did like driving it when I had it. Yeah. When I so, would take it, or when um, you were barfing in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it did ride really nice. It was really powerful, and so I was going to put um, blacked out Ram, one of the new Rams, because those are pretty sick too. In this, but for my whole life, I have been infatuated with the future. I've always wanted. I was always curious about what's next, and the reason I chose this is because this reminds me of everything that we've seen in sci-fi movies from a kid until it's now exactly what i think of when i see it I and it's exactly here it's and it is the back to the future car <laughs> it's the tesla the cyber truck is in there driving right now i mean this looks fake you know we used to see proto you know all the car shows would have prototypes even in the is last 10 years already like people own this you can make the deposits are right now their production is supposed to start this year and i think next year is going to be the what first. is the purpose of it though like why does it look like that um, I think Elon just wanted something ugly, something futuristic like yeah. that. Um, and to me, it's like it does reminds me of like when you draw cars <laughs> when you're five. Yeah, and it comes out like a lumpy looking thing with wheels. Specs on this are fucking nuts too. It um, looks bulletproof though. How, how powerful it is! It looks like how fast like it you is. Were driving like people, it would just be like ping, 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 if people were shooting at you. And so I know that this doesn't have the looks of like the Ram, but to me. Um, I would feel like I'm driving in the future and I just love, I love, it looks like a Rover on Mars that mm. you would see yeah. in a fucking movie. Driving and over. so this would be my dream car. And I think they start at 39,000 is what they're starting so they're at. more affordable than. Yes. Much okay. more. Um, 39 or 49. I think it's 39 for the base model though. So, hmm. and the deposit right now is a hundred, but hundred dollar deposit, um, to have your, uh, reservation held. More info on those should be coming out, but I know it sounded like, and I can respect, I would love to have a muscle car too. I love and respect Yeah, but classics. when we talk about cars, you like more of the like roadsters, you know, like the Gatsby cars, you know, the yeah, older yes, ones. Yeah. You know, I like more of the muscle cars, like the Mustangs and the Camaros. And I would choose the Gatsby cars or the muscle cars 
over the stupid fucking 50s diners cars. Oh, uh, like the I 57 can't... Chevys? Yes. I like those. I hate those. <laughs> they look so dumb. Yeah, those are fun. So um, that was fun. Uh, we can do that with a ton of other stuff, but I wanted to do it with cars. Um, so, yeah. Sweet. We are going to move into um, our videos of the week. And I know Jamie um, sent me one. So I am going to... Uh, Want me to play yours first? Or okay. I'll, I'll do one of mine and then right. play yours and then back to mine. So okay. uh, this I saw this morning and I cannot. This one, it's not, it's kind of funny, but also kind of like shit your pants. So it catches the top, and it comes back, but stops right before. Oh, face. okay. I was like waiting for something to happen. Okay. I know it's the way I the way I cut it up made it. <laughs> he just moved him up. He just I mean that's so close to his face. Yeah, ripping his face off. Oh. Like. And all that happens is the top just hits. It just kind of got stuck. Oh. He's lucky it got stuck. Yeah. He's like, I'm coming down now. Why doesn't he turn it off? I you fool. Like I have you turn no it off, idea. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's going to get down now and it's still going. <laughs> dumb, dumb. Yikes. So, more so crazy than funny. So, this is another one from those influencers in the wild. Oh, my and God. Not only is it <laughs> yes. hilarious, but the caption again, because Chris D'Elia, who's one of our favorite um, stand up comedians, actually follows this page and he comments and talks about this page. Um, and so, in this one, it's Crystalia's voice, and if you follow him, you know you've seen him. And he goes, "Oops!" And so, so whenever Brian, whenever Chris is telling a story, and Brian Callen goes to interrupt him, all of a sudden, Delia will go, "Oops!" Yeah, just like that, <laughs> but really, really loud. Yeah. And everyone stops, and and he'll keep doing it every time Brian interrupts yeah. him. And it's so, hilarious. So, I'm anxious to see what this is. Fluid. So this is funny. Plus, it kind of made me laugh because all everybody knows I'm trying to learn to skateboard, which it's been way too cold for me to skate in the morning. But this is funny because they're like, this chick can't even skate, which would probably be what I look like. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh my god! I can. <laughs> and I can funny. just hear Chris say, "Oops!" Because <laughs> there goes her board into and, the ocean. And I think you said last week some of their sh shit is the caption was what makes it funny. Yes. That, yeah. yeah. That's it, funny. Whoever does this page, it does say funny stuff. Fuck, but this I one made me laugh. I forgot to go follow them. So influencers in the wild. I need to go follow them. Yeah. That's so funny. It's a good one. That made me laugh. That's so, something I would do. Like taking my picture for the gram, and there goes my freaking board into the ocean. <laughs> All right, so this, oh, no. I couldn't, I was trying to look for some context in the comments. Nobody could figure out why they were laughing so hard. I don't know if it's because they all didn't do their noses or what the fuck no, was this happening. No, it hurts like a bitch to take off. But I love the fact that this group of people are just sitting here. They look Doing like they've together. been friends for a long time. Well, it's hilarious to look at you like that, but those are hurt. <laughs> oh my god especially if they have facial hair oh owie <laughs> oh that's so funny yes uh, I, just, I, thought, I thought i was hoping they were gonna start peeling it off no i wish just, you could have seen that part <laughs> that's cute yeah i thought it was I'd really die, cute like i could just see certain friends sitting around doing that like oh my <sighs> gosh i mean that's I, they're just living that is so cool I wish we could see them removing those because if you've done a charcoal mask, you know it hurts. <laughs> like all those th videos have gone viral where people are screaming. I've done that. Like apparently have a really fuzzy face or something because I feel like it's ripping off 10 layers of my skin. Anyway, those, those are the videos that I had um, that I thought were awesome. Um, and before we jump into Jamie's memes, there is one thing that I wanted to share um oh i saw that you did mm -hmm. okay so and these pictures just they 
rip at your soul. I mean, it is just fucking Poor horrible. Guy. You know, his Well, did you listen to the video of him crying? I didn't want to. Oh, he's so sad. Really? It's like I just want to die and oh you my know, gosh. I don't want to live anymore. You know, I think he's 7. I think he's only like 7 years old. It's super sad. Um yeah, but I didn't watch Poor guy. I didn't watch it. I mean, that just kills me. Oh my gosh. So anyways, um Brad Williams, who we've watched his stand-up comedy uh, before, mm-hmm. awesome. In fact, he uh, uh, he was drunk on Something's Bernie. Uh, remember Bert's cooking show, and he fell off the stool. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> In, like slow motion. <laughs> Where'd you go? But anyways, he um, obviously got wind of the story, and he has the same um, type. Uh, type of uh, it's called um, achondroplasia, okay. um, which is a form of dwarfism. And so he um, wanted to get the word out there. He wanted to raise $10,000 and send this kid to uh, Disneyland. Him and his mom, they live in Australia. And they have since raised over Mm -hmm. $200,000, $240,000 on GoFundMe for this family. Um, And uh, Jamie obviously knows more details than I do, but uh, I just wanted to commend Brad Williams for getting it started. This poor, the pictures of this fucking kid just break your heart. It is super sad if you haven't seen the video or if you can handle watching the video, you know. I mean, the poor little guy just had a bad, you know, apparently he's just, you know, I mean, he goes through, his mom talks about how every day they go somewhere, they can't walk through a grocery store without him being stared at and looked at, you know, and how sad for a little guy to, you know, experience that, you know, and then um, he had a bad day of bullying at school and um, he's just talking about, I just want to die, I don't want to be here and, oh, it's horrible, you know, and it wasn't, the mom wasn't trying to like call it, get attention, she's just trying to get the word out like bullying is a thing, you know, and teach your kids to be kind to all others, you know, even if they look different in, um, it's tough. It's a tough, you know, thing to have to deal with for sure. So, yeah, poor little guy. So mm-hmm. I, I had seen that the GoFundMe was creating for. Uh, and we're back. Might have overloaded the system there. We were, we were watching. Uh, Ooh, Jamie was talking that. and Hugh Jackman was talking. <laughs> so uh, that's like that other time. Where I know. We, we don't no more videos. <laughs> Except last time it froze the whole thing. So yeah. But sad story. Um, yeah. Awesome to everybody that has supported him, and I hope that him and his mom have an amazing trip. All the way to Disneyland. Yeah, lesson so. hopefully learned, but unfortunately kids are mean. Yeah. Adults are mean, though. Yeah. I'm sure it's not just kids. It's adults are assholes, too. So, uh-huh. so right. um, on to happier, funnier stuff. On to Jamie's memes. We should have, you should have a plug-in for that. Jamie's memes, 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 like something, because I'm so funny. Okay. Should be like a big part you're of so the funny or your memes are so funny <laughs> i'm funny and i add to the funny memes God damn or it. you can do the one that was just up which one well you can go to the top one that's fine okay that one was just funny i put this in my instagram story and the response was hilarious um so i'm this old just saying and it's indian in the cupboard and it's not so much a meme it's just saying you know how old i am but apparently it's and everybody's this old thing because <laughs> everybody's like, i love that book so a lot of people are like, I love the movie. I'm not really familiar with the movie. Did you watch it mm-hmm. as a kid? Yep. Yeah. Did you read yeah. the book? Yeah. I think cool. I had to read the book in school, yeah. right? Yep. So apparently because it's a classic and I, I don't know if the kids are still reading it in school, but it was just fun. The response of people going, oh my gosh, I used to love that. And I used to watch that movie all the time. And um, there, I know there was a second one. I've read the second one numerous times. I don't know if they made a movie out of the second one, but um, anyway, just flashback Monday for y'all that... Remember Indian in the Cupboard kind of made me want to go watch, find the movie and watch it since I don't remember if I've ever seen it. I want to say it was around the same time that we had to read White Fang, but oh. I don't remember. I, I, my memory is not that good. Yeah. So, so I thought that was funny. just cute. It was just funny. I had seen it on Instagram and shared it on my Insta story and everybody was like, thought it was pretty cool. So uh, apparently um, everybody's this old. This one? Uh, no, they'll go the other one. That one. This one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this one was just funny because this the we were just talking about like the circle of life <laughs> but anyway it says vegan i don't eat meat because i respect nature and then it says nature and it shows a little mouse smelling a frog and then the next photo the frog has the mouse in his mouth because he's <laughs> eating it because nature don't care about uh nature <laughs> No, and it's, animals. There's an there's an <laughs> order for sure. <laughs> and it just struck me funny. I have tons of vegan friends and vegetarian friends and whatever, but I just thought it was funny because I have no doubt that if a animal came here, it would eat you. So <laughs> yeah, and animals <laughs> like, oh, fuck no, about no. your feelings. I don't eat meat. 
so and I, I get it. it factory farming is horrible, but this isn't what this is about. No, exactly. And like yesterday. And I, it's just humor. It's just sarcastic, but and it and it's, just made me It's laugh. funny because I showed Jamie a video yesterday of uh, Nature is Metal oh. um, on Instagram, and it was a mama giraffe that just gave birth to a baby giraffe. And within less than 45 seconds, it was being eaten by a big ass lion. I know. It know? wasn't even <laughs> able to stand <laughs> yet. It was almost not fair. It didn't have a chance mm, that's, because that's, it couldn't even stand up on its thick legs yet and they were they were well, so that was kind of like chicken shit of the tigers though to like take advantage of an animal that has no chance to even run be like let it have a head start that's called survival and there's nothing chicken he couldn't though there's nothing his mom didn't even save him she no, left too survival for the lion there's nothing chicken shit about you having to live <laughs> the mom left her baby she could have oh, like it's... whipped around and tried to pick him up by a scruff and ran away with him no they they know they that don't that's protect not, their they, young they, they just know leave that's them not gonna work. some animals do but that jeff knows it's what, over which ones do which ones do protect their young like which ones um, would have stayed and ran with it or ele- tried to elephants would have stood uh, stood and oh, fought you have rhinos that. elephants hippos. are badass too um yeah hippos are ugly hippos are gnarly I protect my young. And you'd be dead. Why'd well, still go Let's, down uh, with the fight? Is this the only other one? Here's an Adrian meme for you today. <laughs> Adrian meme today. <laughs> it's so ugly. What is that thing from? So this is from Guillermo del Toro's movie uh, Labyrinth, and it is. Oh, not the labyrinth that I know. No, it's a Spanish. Ver- it's a Spanish movie, and it is. You, I've, you've seen parts of it because I've had I know it on. you've played it, but it's, when you say Labyrinth, I always think it's going to be the one that I like. It's disturbing. It's beautiful. It's sad. It's, well, it's beautiful. so fucking good. And this thing is terrifying. Well, this movie. ugly monster thing going like this with big, uh, like that, with the eyeballs. But um, it says, bitches, bitches with fake lashes be like. <laughs> and it just struck me funny um, that he sent that to me because I love my fake lashes. I wear strip lashes pretty often. Not today, but, um, you know, a mo- a lot of my friends and stuff wear either the fake lashes or have lash extensions. And uh, so he knows I would find that funny because um, there's always memes about lashes. Anyway, I just, that struck me funny. Go Adrian. I love, <laughs> yeah, I love that they use this picture for that meme. That's yeah, awesome. That's Ugh, funny. <laughs> that thing's terrifying. And um, that's all I got for my memes today. All right. Uh, well, um, Cool. We're going to finish off with... Uh, did you just have the one quote? Yeah. Okay, so... As my head was hurting, it was hard for me to do my homework. Yeah. All right. I have two, so I'm going to jump into uh, my first one. Um, no one is dumb who is curious. The people who don't ask questions remain clueless throughout their lives. Um, yeah, it's um, as simple as Neil it sounds. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes, by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um I think that you should be skeptical in certain aspects of life. It doesn't matter what the subject is. You should always be curious and asking questions about um, whatever you're passionate about or whatever you're curious about moving forward. Which is you so shouldn't true. just be complacent. It's true, though, because I remember growing up, like even even now, I probably would still be hesitant to ask questions because I don't like to sound dumb. I don't like to ask a question. I'm always afraid, like, is this a stupid question? <laughs> they going to look at me like I'm an idiot, you know? But people should just be, you know. Mm-hmm. He has I, another quote that that talks about that, like, um, on the days that I am wrong, um, in that moment, I'm excited because I've learned, that means I've learned something, um, which is always, that's always a positive. There's nothing negative about learning something. And I think that comes down to an ego thing. Yeah. You know, people don't want to be wrong and it's, it's okay to be wrong. And I mean, that's what scientists, they live on being wrong. They're trying to prove each other wrong all the time. Um, and so, um, I really like that one. Um, and that kind of, we're, we're so, infatuated with just being indoctrinated and everything and instead of being taught how to learn we're taught what to learn um and therefore we don't ask a lot of questions and that goes with a lot of various different subjects sweet um so this one right mm-hmm. it's funny okay. this one today because i picked this last night and then we've been talking about books a library is not a luxury but one of the necessities of life mm. henry ward beecher i l- you know speaking of books i mean we were just talking today about how we like to we enjoy reading um, and the thing is, we, he's better about it, but, um, we go to the library at least once a month. Cruz, you know, loves to go and pick books out. Um, and even my older kids, when they were younger, they were all about like the summer reading club, you know, checking out so many books and reading so many in the summer. Not so much now. It's like pulling teeth to get them to read. But Cruz, I'm hoping will continue to enjoy reading like we do, like I do as an adult. I mean, I would, I was always buried in a book growing up. Um, but I feel like the library 
isn't such a special place anymore. Like because people have Kindles or they, you know, audibles and they download their books or, you know, um, I don't know. To me, I just love having a book. I love turning the pages. I can't imagine. I scroll enough on my phone all day long. Like, (laughs) so to read a book that way or to listen to somebody talk, you know, is just not, um, as appealing to me. So I just thought that was cool. And actually the funny thing was, I my like I said, my headache, I've had a headache for the last few days. And so I had gone to bed without actually finding a quote. And I woke up this morning and I couldn't sleep because my head was still hurting. And I, you know, worst thing I could possibly do is get on my phone, but I did. And this was the first quote that came, this came up on my Facebook, like within one of the pages I follow, like spiritual something, like some kind of yoga page or whatever. And um, I saved it immediately. So I was like, I like this. So if it wasn't for uh, going to the library with crews and having to, you know, get in and get out i could spend a lot of time at the library because it is you know a quiet setting it is nice in there you have all these resources around you they have those rooms that you can lock out for an hour and just go in there by yourself yeah and i have Um, to say actually our library is usually pretty busy no matter what time of day we go which is usually like you know during after school hours i think we've gone the weekends a few times you know um, it is usually pretty busy with people which makes me happy you know and both he and i always leave with at least a few books yeah um for a while it's interesting though because our library and i don't know if this is a library thing everywhere it doesn't have late fees anymore so Mm -hmm. um they, they, you know, if you had late fees, they waived them all about a year ago and they still, they don't, you know, you check them out like all, it's all automated now. It's really weird. The only time that your book is really due, it, so they oh, do somebody wants automatic it. renewals. Yes, they do automatic renewals now. And if it's due, that means that somebody has requested it. So yeah. that's a really cool system that they got going on. Yeah, I like that. But yeah, so I thought that was cool. And... um. This kind of ties into what I was saying at the end of the last quote, but uh, knowing how to think um, empowers you far beyond those who know only what to think. And this just ties into the indoctrination of whether it be political beliefs, religious beliefs, um, the way you're taught in school and and, um, what to learn, not how to learn. And so I don't need to delve deep into it. Basically, like how to think for yourself. Uh, Yes, learn. And not to think what, how everybody teaches you or tells you what you're supposed to think. I get it. Exactly. Don't be taught what to think, but how to think. And so Mm. I've always loved this one of his. It's always popped up numerous times. So, Well, that's, I like that because there's a lot of like, you can go back to like, you know, kids don't know fear. They don't know hate. They don't know racism. You know, they're taught that somewhere. Systematic. Yeah. You know, so if you teach them to be open-minded and love all people, you know, then, you know, that's just my thought on it. You know, think for yourself, (laughs) Yeah. you know, don't be influenced by those around you. Ask questions. Don't be Mm -hmm. afraid to ask questions. Ask how, ask why. So, um, yeah, that's, um, that is my quotes. Um, we got something fun coming up this weekend, but nothing that, uh, we can speak about. Um, and then do we have anything else? We are probably going to wait. Um, I'll probably set the date and then, uh, invite some of y'all, um, to, uh, the backyard where we're going to do our first Central Coast taste, but I don't know when we're going to do that yet. So stay on the lookout for that. But you got anything coming up? No, my, okay. our, our fun thing is a lot of work and I'm excited for it to be over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for it to happen, but I'm excited for it to be done. Cause it's been a lot of work for me the last couple of weeks. Cool. So. Sweet. Well, um, other than that, um, we got n- nothing, nothing on the books. Last week was chaotic. I'm glad that's over with. And um, we are here moving forward to another week and into fucking March where I get to plan your birthday. Mm-hmm. Getting old, woman. That was good for a staycation. We got to help tell your mom she needs to take some time off of work again. <laughs> Don't tell me what I know. Well, that's just what I want to do. Okay, well your birthday so um you don't get to plan it i do <laughs> just kidding <laughs> i like staycations i'm all about it <laughs> Ew. oh shakira, hey, shakira can do it but i can't <laughs> yeah uh, it's not the same when shakira does it fine don't call me sexy <laughs> anyways um yeah thank you guys for joining us on episode 15 um, i'm gonna let jamie off now so she can go and try and let her head cool off no um, don't we have a reaction to better. do now yeah but (laughs) (laughs) um i'm trying to sound like a good husband and be like i'm letting you go thanks so 
But we will see you guys next week. Um, if you can, um, go follow our social media, um, uh, Salty Blowy on Instagram, and follow along with our dream cards. Let us know what your dream cards would be. Um, and then let us know what your favorite TV shows are, uh, whether they're in the past or currently um, playing. So thanks again, guys. Um, you got anything to add? No. All right, players. We will uh, see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.